the juice of three lemons. Strain your juice into a cup. Add three cups of your favorite water. I happen to like reverse osmosis. Pour that into a pitcher of your choice. I love this pitcher for my lemonade. Half a cup of sugar. We're gonna stir that into the water until it's clear. Then we're going to pour the magic into that sugared water and give that a stir. And pour your lemonade over ice. Garnish however you like it. And you've got the perfect refreshing drink for going out and working in your garden all day. This is such a treat to come in. Now, because I do get ants occasionally searching out sugar in my cabin, I set my pitcher in a tray with a little bit of water. I just set the whole pitcher on that, and the ants can't get to it. Then every time I come inside and want a refreshing drink, I have lemonade, fresh squeezed lemonade. Enjoy. So my dog is gonna have a fit because I'm up here at Rudy Road without him. Just me and the butterflies. The butterflies are using these trails a lot, I'm noticing. So, okay, today's gonna have to be one of my last uh, big projects. Hi, Rudy. But I, I have to get busy on the annual cup flower beds. I'm just waiting for that last frost date. But along Rudy Road, y'all remember I just made this road. Um, I thought it would be fun, like right in here, to put sort of a shade garden. And I made these cute lamps. <laughs> And Bo, the first time we walked up here, he saw those things sitting there and he's like, nope, nope, nope. There's four of them, one of me. I don't know what they are. I'm not walking past them. And he said, oh, let's go home. <laughs> let's go back the way we came. So I had to show him that they're just lamps. They're really cute. They're really simple. They're a Dollar Tree project and they're just clear plastic bowls and you tape what you don't want spray painted and then you spray paint and then you just glue your uh, your solar stake to the bowl. So I made a bunch of those. I thought they'd be kind of cool. I'm gonna come in here. I'm sprayed down from the ticks. So oh, hopefully, hopefully nine million of my closest friends don't find me out here today, but you never know. And we're gonna clear all of this brushy stuff out of here. I'm gonna have to get my small steel chainsaw and cut out some of these saplings. And then I thought this would be my first experience with caladiums. They're kind of a tropical understory plant. They won't survive here as a perennial, but I thought if I put them, the bulbs, in flower pots and then bury the flower pots, that come fall, I can dig them up and bring them in and enjoy them again next year. But first things first, I need to clear out this space. Well, that certainly looks different, doesn't it? It's not so much the cutting as it is the carting off of the debris. That's what takes so long, so many steps. All right, I'm going to go sit in the shade with a glass of lemonade and I'll be back to rake this. So I was just chatting with Rudy and he asked me, did I know what the most common trees in Missouri are? So Missouri is home to 89 species of trees and the most common of which are oak and hickory. And the state tree is the flowering dogwood and that's actually more common in Southern Missouri. And you wondered why I left that stick there. <laughs> 
Okay, so the pots are in the ground. I went ahead and went with plastic because it's what I had. I thought about spray painting them the same colors as my little lanterns that I made. However, I don't really think I want to put any more spray paint toxins in my forest floor than I already am with the lanterns. So I just buried the pots and of course I used the same soil that came out of the hole to go into the pots. The worst part about burying these pots up here in the forest is that you run into all of these vines. However, if you should ever find yourself in a survival situation for whatever reason, it's good to know where to find those vines because you can use them as cordage. All right, so here are our caladium roots and they wanna grow. So it's pretty easy to tell which side is up. They only have to be planted at a depth of two to three inches in these pots. So at the Dollar Tree, they not only sell seeds for, for a dollar, but on the other side of that display, they have some roots and corms, such as these. These are ranunculus. They were three for a dollar and a quarter. My friend Zanie Mae at Spring Meadows Farm and Garden, she grows these and puts them into beautiful bouquets. So I thought I'd try these since it says full sun to partial shade. Also, I picked up three for $1.25 at Dollar Tree. These are called Tridalia, and these happen to be Queen Fabiola. Same thing, I got three for a dollar and a quarter. So I'm gonna add these to this partial shade garden as well. And we're just gonna water everything in with some beautiful freshly caught rainwater. Then I wanna put my lamps in, leaning just slightly towards the south so that they can get a little extra sun exposure. Now, when Bo and I walk past here on our long evening walks, we have something of definite interest to look at on our way. So I found a few little fun characters, a couple of frogs and a turtle who I thought might appreciate living up here in this created rainforest area of our Missouri woods. And a couple of little fairy bungalows have popped up over there. And those cute little lamps will illuminate our way if we decide to take a late evening walk. All right, guys, thanks for sticking with me on this video. And I will talk to you again in the next one. Until then, I'm wishing for you many, many blessings, love and light.